Hi everyone, uh, today we are going to discuss OSPF area. So we already discussed uh, some details about OSPF, but we did not discuss OSPF areas, which we are going to discuss today. So if you remember from that video, we, we discussed that when, when some of the routers are configured with OSPF, then every router actually conveys every information to the other router so that other routes can also make their routing tables. For example, what happens in this case, if you look at this R10, this R10 has to send some specific OSP of messages that is known as LSA, or link state advertisement. So what happens, this R10 actually filters its network information to all the remaining routers. So this information like goes like this, so to the neighbors and neighbors also forward to others and this way this reaches to R1. And now R1 also has to do the same thing. It has to send that information to all these routers and maybe for example R7, this R7 has to send to all this information to all these routers. And so this is, this is the basic principle of flooding. So you see, in this case, we have a problem. So if we keep increasing the number of routers in a single OSPF domain, it means all the routers where the, all the routers are configured with OSPF, and if we increase the number of routers in that domain, then you can look at the problem. So every router has to process this all information coming from those all routers, and yes. So what happens? If the number of routers and the links increases, it becomes really challenging to compute the best part. Still, we can do this, but we need more resources, more processing power, more memory. So specifically, if we say that with increase in number of routers in some OSPF domain, so for example, this is OSPF domain, means all the routers are configured with OSPF. They all are using this routing protocol, open short as part first routing protocol. So if the number is going to increase, the first issue is that this will require more time to process it. Because if this router has to find out the path to some other routers, then it has to process, it has to look at these all routers there. The information from all the routers have to be checked, so it will take some time. So this shortest path first algorithm will take some time to give us some results. And this will also need more memory on the routers because router has to save this information from all the router. So apparent problem is there. And also the one most important problem, or one of the most important problems is that if any link, so I have not connected these all routers, but these all routers are supposed to be connected with E everyone. And if any one of the links fails, for example, if this link fails, then they all have to send that information to all the remaining routers. So they all have to rerun this shortest path first algorithm to come up with a new, uh, new picture of this uh, protocol uh, to new status. They need to converge. Now, the solution is that now to overcome the complexity of OSPF, this routing domain is divided into smaller units and those smaller units are known as OSPF areas. So for example, we can take one, some of the routers in one area, some of the routers in another area, and then some of the remaining routers in some other area. So we have divided that domain into multiple areas. And now only these areas only these areas will have identical LSTP. So they will be maintaining their link state database locally. So these all routers will have identical copies of LSTP. But LSTP from this area and this area, they don't need to be identical. So this area will only be processing the LSTP uh, related with, uh, with this. Of course, they will have little information about that, but they will not be that complete. So we are going to discuss it. So only same area will have identical LSTB and shortest path 
first calculations are done only on the topology inside one local area. So this SPF calculation will be done locally here, here, and here. It means the processing time will be reduced. Memory requirements will also be uh, reduced by dividing this in that way, so this area. And uh, yes, how many routers should be there in one area? So as per study, this is recommended to have no more than 50 routers per single OSPF area. So 50 is the limit as per study. So router interfaces within same subnet are placed with same area. So this is some guidelines that if the routers are within some same subnet, then they need to be, they should be placed in one area. This is kind of recommendation. So what happened? Now we need to communicate. We, there should be some mechanism that we should be able to communicate with other area. So we can say this area should be able to communicate with this area and this area should be able to communicate with this area. So what happens between those areas, only summary LSTB is exchanged, not full LSTB, only summary LSTB is exchanged. So like they will have the information about this subnet and this mask. So only subnet and mask about this area and this area will be there, but the complete LSTB will not be there to reduce the burden. Now, uh, so summary table may be put uh, without very much uh, intensive SPF calculations. Now, this is same. And then what happens? Uh, so yes, one area out of those areas, one area selected as backbone area that is known as area zero. So you see, here out of these area, one area, for example, we have selected this area as a backbone area and we name them, we name it as an area zero. And rest of the areas are non-backbone areas and their number may start from one, two, three, like this. Area one and area two, only area zero, we assign it to a backbone area. And the remaining area are known as non-backbone areas. Now, OSPF actually expects all areas to inject routing information into the backbone area. So all these remaining area will send this routing information to the backbone area, to this boss area, leader area. So, and then this backbone area will actually distribute that information to other areas. So all have to convey to this, so this, as well as this, they have to convey to this backbone area. And now this backbone area, being a family, or, or, or the elder member of the family will distribute this information to the rest of the area. And now the traffic between non-backbone areas must flow through backbone area. So what happens if this area, if for example, if this area wants to send something, then this traffic has to go from this area to backbone area, then to this area. So these non-backbone areas are not allowed to communicate directly. This is not allowed. They need to go, they, they need to go always through this uh, backbone area. So same way. Now, we have uh, we have some of the routers. We have given some different names to them. So the routers which are only connecting these in the backbone area, those all routers are known as backbone routers because they are only connecting the backbone area. So this is backbone router. And then we have area backbone router. So you can see this is the area backbone router and you can see some of its interfaces are here in the backbone area and some of its interfaces are in some non-backbone area. So this is also a uh, area border router and this is also an area border router. Uh, so in this case, some of the interfaces are in area zero and some of them are in some other areas. 
And in some of the cases, we can have a non-OSPF domain. It means in this domain, these routers are not configured with OSPF, but from this point and onwards, these routers are configured with OSPF. In that case, we use a router, and that router is known as Autonomous System Boundary Router, so ASBR. And that router actually connects at least one OSPF area with at least one non-OSPF area. In addition to that, we can also have some internal routers and a router within a single area is known as internal router. So in backbone area, those were the uh, backbone routers and remaining in these areas, we have different routers and those routers are known as internal routers. So in this case, this is internal routers and these are internal routers. Yes. So this was all about OSPF areas and backbone area and non-backbone areas and some related terms, or related names of different routers. And um, yes, that's it for this video and thank you very much.